Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and today we're going to dive into part two of what is a dwarf retic really? So in order to do this, I brought back my friend, Hadley Kennedy, our wildlife biologist around here, to talk about this paper that is written called the Review of the Reticulated Python. So this is a paper written back in 2002, so we're gonna jump back into it in the next section. So the point of this paper was to outline the unique species from this island archipelago. Everything from out there is unique. And this paper, like you said, from 2002, was actually the first time that dwarf retics are mentioned in scientific literature. So in our last video, we were saying how the researchers were looking at these subspecies over three different lenses. So they looked at morphological data, phylogenetic data, and geographical differences that really distinguished these as three different subspecies. And in this video, we're gonna dive deep into the morphological side of that. Uh, so morphological is just the overall structure or form of an animal in this case. So we're looking at physical traits, things that you can see with your eyes. So color, size, things like that. This is actually the way scientists used to classify everything. This looks like this, this looks like that. And it wasn't until more recent history that we really got to have the benefit of like DNA analysis, but we'll get into that in the next video. So originally, retics were all classified as one general species in reticulatus. So once people start, started to see different physical differences between all these, especially animals from Jampea, they decided to look further into it. They noticed, in particular, the snakes from Jampea were much smaller than those of Sulawesi and other areas. They were only about a fourth of the size, so it was a pretty big size difference to stand out. So that's where they started their study and then they continued to go all over retics range and gathered information and specimens from 12 different population locations. So of these specimens there were a few from Solaire and there are a few from Jampea and then the rest like I said were all over the range of retics and they tried to get from different locations so that more of their range was represented and this gave us a little more variability in the data that was collected as well. The mainland specimens were collected from Vietnam, Malaysia, Java, Bali, Kalimantan, Songhe, and they also got one from Sulawesi, which ended up being more related to Slayers. I gotta just say, I'm pretty impressed with the way that you pulled off those pronunciations. That was pretty good. It's all in a day's work. They also grabbed a specimen that was Python malorus, which is an Indian python. And that was used as a reference point. That was an outgroup so that they could look at that python compared to our reticulate pythons just to see the overall differences to really have an outlier in the group. So to look at all the morphological differences between these specimens, the researchers looked at length, color pattern, and scale counts. So they ended up seeing differences between each subspecies in each category, but the biggest and most obvious one would be length. So we have our mainlands being, of course, the longest, and then in between there, the Solaires, and then the shortest would be Jampeas. And these differences you'll see throughout their lives, all the way from hatchling to adults. So in the mainland specimens, or reticulatus, reticulatus, they saw the hatchlings coming out at about two to two and a half feet long. And in this study in particular, they reported seeing an adult that was 26 feet long, which seems pretty big. Well, that's an absolute monster. I don't know that a 26-foot adult retic exists, and I'm not sure. Like, there's been a lot of claims that may have been what they were referencing, just kind of like using that number as saying all the way up. But I mean, certainly there have been some truly monstrous mainlands out there. There's actually one picture out there by one of the authors of this article, Dr. Alia that he has taken where I believe it's his hand next to a absolute ginormous retake head. It's just, it's just a really shocking picture to see the size of that head. So we know they're big. And now jumping down to the shortest, the jamps, they're seeing hatchlings coming out at just a little under a foot. And in this study too, they couldn't even find any adults that were over six feet long on the island. Which is pretty small for adult jamp. I mean, they're definitely like reaching sexual maturity at that size. And it, it's interesting because we have two wild caught jamps downstairs and neither one is much over six feet. They're both like that six, six and a half foot range. Breeder adults, old ones, but in captivity, they seem to be growing a little bit longer. 
So I wouldn't say that, you know, if you have anything over six feet, it's no longer a jamp or anything like that. Um, but as it pertains to this study, it is interesting that they didn't find anything bigger than that, you know, as a wild caught. So these wild caught, even the imported animals that I have may not represent the overall size of your next captive bred generation. And now in between the two, Slayers or Sapuchiai, they are falling in between. Now there is a quite big of a difference jumping down from the mainland size to Slayers, but we're gonna see our Slayers be slightly bigger, but more close to the size of Jampea, both in hatchling and adult sizes. So another thing the researchers looked at where they saw a lot of differences as well was the overall color and patterns of the retics. Looking at mainlands or reticulatus, overall their whole body just has kind of vague color combinations. So their general body color is either a darker yellow to a lighter brown. The side of their head is normally lighter than the top of it and their throat is normally a white to a pale yellow color. What's interesting is mainlands have a less contrasted reticulation which is that net like pattern that we see on retics. But they do have a more distinct and black bold margin within that pattern. The white blotches in their pattern are bordered by those thicker black margins and then that is then bordered by a goldish yellow color. The blotches within their patterns are usually more of an oval or a rhombus shape. A mainland's head stamp normally reaches from their inner nasal scales to the nape of their neck, so we're gonna see that it's normally shorter than what we'd see on a jam. Okay, so with the mainland descriptions out of the way, now we can get into the part that counts. What is better? If you guys saw the comments on the last video, I love jams and you like the Slayers. It's funny because there actually is a pretty good quote out there about Slayers just to give you an idea of how great they are and how beautiful their colors are. Um, it's from these authors, Barker and Barker. Oh, that's Dave and Tracy. Yeah, you know them? Yeah. Well, it's funny because they seem like they're your friends, but they're actually on my side. <laughs> So they pretty much say that, yes, all retakes are beautiful, but the one that really stands out the most are Slayers, that they just have such a bright, bold color, their patterns are so contrasted, so I think we have a scientific backing to this now. <laughs> oh, brother. So Slayers, or Sapuchiai, normally have a eye color of a pale gold to a pale orange. They have this bright, golden yellow pattern, and like we said, are just so vibrant. Their heads are normally different shades of yellow, and their throat is normally a white to a pale yellow. Their bellies are an off-white, or also have a little bit of yellow to them, so overall we're just gonna see a lot of yellow in Slayers. They have a very clearly contrasted reticulation, and within that pattern they have very dark and bold black margins. They have more of a braided or half donut pattern to them, and they normally have a little less white in their pattern and have more yellow and tan. Their head stamp is generally a similar length to that of mainland, so again, it's gonna be shorter than a jamps, and it's going from their inner nasals to the nape of their neck. Now as for jamps, or jampeanus, their eyes are normally an orange to a pale gold color. They sometimes have a little bit of a gray look to them, like a gray film color. Overall, they have this silvery brown to gray color over their whole body and almost lacking yellow within their entire body. It's more of a muted look. The top of their head is generally gray as well, and their belly is normally a white to a pale yellow. The reticulation pattern on their body is not as present in their neck and anterior dorsum area, and they just generally have less distinct and bold blacks on them compared to the other two subspecies. They normally have larger white blotches within their pattern than you would see on a mainland as well. Their head stamp actually starts closer to their nose compared to Slayers and mainlands and goes all the way back to the nape of their neck as well. It's interesting that you are saying that even in this paper they're noticing those silvery, you said it's almost like gray film or like a black and white photo version of the jamps because about five years after this writ was written, would have been about 15 years ago, um, I was looking at some jamps with uh, Tim O'Reilly and Jay Brewer, and we noticed these silvery things. We ended up proving out that that was a recessive genetic trait that was naturally occurring on the island. It was pretty fun. I remember at the time, you know, saying that a morph was coming from these localities. A lot of people, it was like they were freaking out, calling us scam artists, all that kind of stuff. But we'd proven it over and over as this recessive genetic trait just super cool for me to be able to find something like that 
in a pure locality animal. And jamps were the first ones we did it in. So we got the length, and then we talked about the color and the pattern, but that's not all that you can see looking at them. You were saying that the last thing that they looked at were the scales, which I actually think in, when I look at my animals makes a big difference as well. Right, and it's really important that they look at scale counts because that is something that helps us really distinguish that these animals are different than our mainlands, that they are truly dwarf and they are different subspecies because, you know, size and all that, that can change, but when it comes to scales, that's not something, not something that's going to change quickly over time in an evolutionary kind of way because they are located on a small island. The number and configuration of scales that they have is going to stay the same and seeing those differences between the subspecies is really going to show us, all right, these are distinct. So overall, the scales are just an important part to look at because it's something that dispels the myth that dwarfs are just underfed mainlands. So this whole time we are kind of going throughout an order of mainlands being the highest when it comes to length with Sapucheri in between and then jams at the bottom. But when we look at scales, it actually changes things around a bit. So in this case, Solaires were actually found having the highest scale counts, mainlands somewhere in between, and then jams having the lowest counts. So in mainlands, we saw that their anterior prefrontal scales are longer than they are wide and that they have two rows of posterior prefrontal scales. Now as for body scales, they have between 61 and 80 dorsal scale rows at their mid-body area, between 297 and 335 ventral scales, which are the longer belly scales that we'll see, and between 55 and 102 subcaudal scales. So overall, mainlands have less scales than salaires, but more than jams. And this lower number of scales is the reason why we see a little less contrast in their color and pattern than we would with Solaires. Since Solaires had scales, their anterior prefrontals are slightly longer than they are wide, and they also have two rows of posterior prefrontal scales. As for their body, they have between 77 and 81 dorsal scale rows, between 332 and 334 ventral scales, and 93 to 95 subcaudals. So overall, again, Solaires have the highest overall scale counts between the three. And now in jamps, we're gonna see one big difference in their head scales, so pay attention. Their anterior prefrontals are longer than they are wide, and then they have just one row of posterior prefrontal scales. So lining them all up, you're really gonna see the difference in jamps versus the other two. They have 64 to 68 dorsal scale rows. They have 290 to 306 ventral scales and about 80 to 90 subcaudals. So again, overall, the lowest body, ventral, mid body scale counts between the three. And when you look at the scale counts, like what I was talking about, how they actually relate to the way the animal looks. If you think of scale counts or the number of scales on the body as kind of like your high def, you know, if you have a higher definition television, you have more pixels, and so there's a clearer picture. So when you look at Slayers, they have that higher scale count, so it's like, almost like high def, and that's probably why you get the real sweeping lines, versus the Jampeas, which are almost more like a mosaic tile with those fewer, larger scales, and a lot of times, each scale is only one color, so they kind of have this piece together looks. So cool. Here he goes again. All right, well that's it for morphology. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and join us next time for phylogeny. Ooh, phylogeny, my favorite of the ogenies. Good times. You know, if you're doing a phylogeny video, you're gonna have a hard time competing with Clint. That's a hard one to reptiles. be, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good on that stuff. You guys should go check him out because he has some really cool phylogeny videos himself. Yes, absolutely. Cool, well. That's it. I can't believe you kept bringing up how layers are better in this video. That's it, I'm out of here. I don't wanna, here, oh no, you know what? Before we do that, roll the Patreon over Hadley's face. Right here. Go Thank ahead. you, Patreon. I know you guys love me. <laughs> Just stay there. We need all the names on your face. <laughs> I'm out. Stupid Slayer's better, everyone can't see past the end of their nose. <laughs>